in this lecture we'll continue with our examples of modeling dynamic systems and then simulating them with Simulink. Here we are looking at a slightly more complicated example. This is a two degree freedom system. It's also a rotational system. So we have two rotational masses G1, G2, uh, G1 and G2 being the moments of inertia of these disks. J1 is connected to J2 through a shaft that has a rotational spring constant K1 and structural damping B1. G2 is connected to the wall and this shaft has rotational spring constant K2 and damping constant B2. Uh, just like the linear damping, the rotational damping um, uh, exerts a torque that opposes the motion of the rotational mass and this torque is equal to this uh, B2 times theta 2 dot in this case essentially it's uh, the rotational damping coefficient times uh, the rate of twist of the rotational uh, body. By convention everything that goes anti-clockwise is positive so we'll start looking at this system from the left hand side so theta 1 and theta 2 are positive by the way there is a forcing torque tau it's an external torque on j1 and this essentially controls the motion of j1 and j2 we assume theta 1 equal to theta 2 uh, just to maintain consistency you could very as well have uh, theta 2 greater than theta 1 you just have to be consistent at the end of the day all the equations will look the same so let's look at what are the torques obviously there is the forcing torque which is in the anti-clockwise direction it's positive the spring torque opposes the motion tau k1 equal to k1 times theta 1 minus theta 2 theta 1 minus theta 2 is the relative twist of the shaft also there's the damping torque tau b1 which is b1 times theta 1 dot minus theta 2 dot theta 1 dot minus theta 2 dot is the rate of change of relative twist we sum all the torques so j1 theta 1 double dot equal to summation of all torques which is tau minus tau k1 minus tau b1 just expand all the terms now we'll write theta 1 double dot explicitly like so let's look at j2 uh, the torques that act on j2 are tau k1 in a direction that is opposite of what it acted on j1 these two torques will balance each other in internal torques similarly tau b1 in addition there is a torque due to the second shaft in the anti-clockwise direction so tau k2 equal to k2 times theta 2 tau b2 equal to b2 times theta 2 dot now we do the summation of all torques write out the terms explicitly and write an expression for theta 2 double dot now we'll go ahead and write this in a graphical format so there we have a theta 1 double dot equation and theta 2 double dot equations right here. Just like we did before, if we integrate theta 1 once, theta 1 double dot once, you get theta 1 dot, you integrate it again, you get theta 1. Similarly, you can have the same thing for theta 2 double dot. Now we write these all these terms graphically. So let's look at that term. So k1 times theta 1 minus theta 2 plus b1 times theta 1 dot minus theta 2 dot. So here is theta 2 dot, here is theta 1 dot, subtract one from the other, scale it by b1. There is theta 1, there is theta 2, subtract one from the other, scale it by k1, and then add both. Now that gets subtracted from tau. That is all this and then it's scaled by 1 by j1 you can do the same thing for this and that's your complete uh, graphical representation here so if you notice this term here that is right here and these two terms are this 
and this right here and they get scaled by 1 by j2 and that equal to the theta 2 double dot. Now it so happens that I've already prepared the simulation in MATLAB and let's go have a look at it if I can find there you have it. So that is your 1 by j1 this is theta 2 double dot theta 1 double dot sorry theta 1 dot theta and right here we have theta 2 double dot theta 2 dot and theta 2 now if you look here in our bus I have lots of things going on here what I'm essentially doing is looking at theta 1 I'm looking at theta 2 I'm looking at the velocity theta 1 dot looking at uh, the velocity theta 2 dot and also I'm looking at the input which happens to be a step input okay and I have defined all my variables here all I can do I can go in and look what are the variables by typing who so I can see what is b1 and what is b2 what is j1 j2 k1 aha uh -huh. I have not specified k1 let's see no small k1 k1 k2 let me run this simulation done and then sim plot sim out and there you have it that's my output I don't know what the variables are but let's let's just put a legend and see what happens here legend obviously theta 1 theta 2 v theta 1 v theta 2 and finally and uh, it should give us all the colors here uh, that's theta 1 looks like that is theta 2 this is the velocity of 1 this is the velocity of 2 and that's the input which is step and that's the end of our lesson